afternoon all. Here's a little uh, Arduino compatible Pro Mini and it's just running the standard blink program the red LED switches on for a second and then switches off for a second. Now I've put um, some meter probes into the ground line it could have been the VCC line but the ground line was just easier because I want to measure how much current this thing's drawing and on the sinometer it's kind of around 16 milliamps. Now it keeps flicking backwards and forwards and that's because of course we're turning the little red LED on and off. So what I'm going to do in order to uh, stop it doing that instead of the blink program which is there I'm going to actually open the bare minimum sketch. So there's the sketch called bare minimum. It contains no code in the setup function and no code in the loop function. So it'll do nothing. Um, okay, let's uh, send that to the board. So it's compiling on my little FTDI board. Wait for the red and green lights to flicker. I think that was it. And now the LED won't be flashing on and off. But it is running the code, the sort of Arduino overhead code. Um, it's just not doing anything. Let's see how much current it consumes to not do anything. So it's about 14 milliamps. Now that's a lot. 14 milliamps is a lot of current. And uh, what made me want to do this is that my little OLED project with the uh, OLED, the 3.3 volt uh, Arduino there, running from a little tiny lithium polymer battery. I really want it to run for as long as possible and uh, not to run the battery down too quickly. And uh, when I let this run just until the battery did go flat, it only ran for about two hours. Now the battery wasn't fully charged, so I might get four hours out of it. But even so, it would be nice if I could do something to get a bit more time. And uh, turning the display off after a period of time would be one way but also reducing the amount of current that the Arduino draws um, would be another aim, another goal. So here's the data sheet for the AVR uh, microcontroller AT Mega 328P, which is the chip on that little Pro Mini. Now this is a beast of a data sheet. This is 440 pages of stuff. Now I was reading all about the uh, system clock and in section 811 system clock prescaler it says this feature can be used to decrease the system clock frequency and the power consumption when the requirement for processing power is low. So what it means is that we can slow the clock down using this system clock prescaler and the chip should use less power. Now there's a register called clock PR, the clock prescale register, and uh, bits 7, 3, 2, 1 and 0 are relevant in here. If you scroll down a bit you can see the prescale factors for bits 3, 2, 1 and 0. If you have all zeros, the top line, then the prescale ratio is 1 to 1, so it will run at the full crystal speed. But you can then divide by 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, or 256. Now, the Pro Mini uses a 16 megahertz uh, ceramic oscillator, uh, ceramic resonator it's called. And um, so if we have a one-to-one -one prescale, then the internal workings of the chip will also run at 16 megahertz. But if we had a two-to-one prescale, we could get the internal workings of the chip to run at 8 megahertz and we might find that the power consumption drops from that 14 milliamps. Let's give it a try. Now there's a locking mechanism to stop unintentional changes of clock frequency. Um, a special write procedure must be followed to change the clock PS bits. What you have to do is you have to uh, set bit 7 um, and put all the other bits to zeros, that's number one there, and then on number two, within four cycles, so fairly quickly afterwards, you've got to write the value you want to the lower four bits in clock PS uh, with bit seven reset. 
So into the bare minimum sketch, I've just put these two lines, clock PR equals hexadecimal 80, clock PR equals hexadecimal 01. So the second line down there, 0001, that's 01, and the clock division factor will be 2. So the internal workings of the chip will now be running at 8 megahertz. So let's send that to the chip. There it goes. Wait for the FTDI LEDs to come on. There they go. And the 14 milliamps now drops to about 10 milliamps. Let's go a little bit further. So I've now got the second line as hexadecimal 02. That will divide the clock by 4, so that should result in 4 megahertz internal. So currently 10 milliamps, waiting for the FTDI. There it goes. And although the initial current is high, because of course the chip, when reset, goes to its initial frequencies, that's now dropping to 8 milliamps. So we've gone from 14 to about 10 to about 8. Let's see how much further we can take this. Let's take the fifth line down, so that's 0100, 16 division factor. So that will divide the 16 megahertz clock down to a 1 megahertz. Uh, 0100 is 4. So the second line there, hexadecimal 04. Let's send that. And we're expecting that 8 milliamps to drop. FTDI. There goes the program. And what have we got? So it's going down towards 6 milliamps. Now we could take this further. We could um, divide the internal clock in total by a division factor of 256. And that would actually take the internal workings of the chip down to about 60 kilohertz, which is very slow. But actually there's a bit of diminishing returns here. Um, you can keep going and you only get down to about 5 milliamps. That's the, the, the lowest current that you can get this chip to take just by reducing the clock frequency. Now just for a moment I've gone back to the blink program and I've added those two lines of code clock PR is 80 hex and clock PR is 4 hex into blink and we've got the thousand millisecond uh, delay for LED high and also thousand milliseconds for low but it does have an implication on the operation of the delay routine and you can see there that the LED is off and off for quite some time and I'm going to have to hold it here for a little while before that comes back on and there it is on. Now it's fairly obvious that that is not coming on for a second and going off for a second. In fact it's coming on for 16 seconds and going off for 16 seconds. We do have our lower current value. Um, now that 8.9 or 9 milliamps dropped to 6 at the point where the LED went off. But because the clock is running 16 times slower than the Arduino is expecting, the delay routine, the delay function, is operating 16 times slower as well. So let's compensate for that by changing those delays so that they are a sixteenth of a thousand. Now what's a sixteenth of a thousand? Uh, one sixteenth of a thousand is actually sixty two and a half. So I've put sixty two milliseconds into the two delays. Now sixty two milliseconds would be quite a short delay if the chip were running at the normal speed. But we can see that it's not running at the normal speed and that has given us that one second on, one second off um, delay because it's sixteen times as long as uh, the delay routine is being told to delay it. Actually one thing I didn't say and I should have done is that I took the resistor out from the power LED just there next to the three terminal regulator because I wanted to um, remove that LED which is just on all the time to get a fair assessment of how much current this thing is taking. So slowing down the uh, clock prescaler has given us a lower current consumption 14 milliamps down to 6 milliamps but it does have implications for the delay function. It will also affect the operation of the millis function.
function and because it's slowing all the synchronous registers in the chip down it will also affect um, pulse width modulation frequencies so they're normally uh, 490 hertz and uh, something over a kilohertz I can't remember what it is they would be scaled down by a factor of 16 as well if you slow the clock prescaler but 6 milliamps is still a fair amount and I wanted to take this a bit further so in section 9 power management and sleep modes if you come down to 9.9 .9, actually 9.10 minimizing power consumption we have this minimizing power consumption there are several possibilities to consider when trying to minimize the power consumption in an AVR controlled system in general sleep modes should be used as much as possible and the sleep mode should be selected so that it's blah 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 so what it's saying is we need to look at putting the microcontroller to sleep to get the power to go even lower let's have a look at how that's done so we've got the sleep mode control register SMCR and we can write to the lower four bits of that 3, 2 and 1 are the sleep mode according to this table here and there are eight sleep modes the lowest power one is power down the third one down and then bit 0 up there is sleep enable which is there so we need to set that to a logic one um, but then right at the bottom there it says the sleep instruction and that's where we've got a bit of a problem to actually make the microcontroller go to sleep we have to issue this um, assembly language instruction sleep incidentally I'm in section 31 now now I can't just write sleep into the C code because it won't have it so this has to be done a slightly different way so I've had to bring in a library it's that line that says hash include avr slash sleep dot h now it's a built-in library it's not anything you have to install so you can just write that line of code in and it will pull it in and then there are three instructions further down set the sleep mode and I've gone for power down because it's the lowest power of all the modes sleep enable and this is another one of those two-step processes to prevent accidentally putting your microcontroller to sleep when you don't want to and then that last instruction sleep CPU is the C uh, function which contains the assembly language command sleep and this should if I compile it put the microcontroller to sleep let's see if it works send that compiling see if it gets transferred there it goes so that should now be asleep and there we are so no longer have we got any milliamps we've got 0.23 milliamps so that's 230 microamps so finally we've got the Arduino compatible Pro Mini to use a tiny amount of power. Now coming out of sleep requires the use of interrupts and that's a little bit more complicated but I was thinking on this data display project the unit could display data on the OLED for say 10 or 15 seconds blank the OLED and then just go to sleep and that would mean that the uh, chip would be using very little power and then to display the data again you just press reset the program restarts from the beginning and uh, it would display the data for another 10 seconds and uh, as we appro approach spring my thoughts of course are turning once again to the MPPT solar charge controller project and I was just thinking if we could use some of those techniques like slowing the clock down and periodically putting the microcontroller to sleep could reduce the power consumption on this solar power project which for solar power is essential of course because solar power charge controllers shouldn't be gobbling up all the power that's coming from the solar panels